Hi, my name is Andrew. Uh, this is an extra credit submission for Dr. Schubert, uh, CSE 310 Digital Logic. Uh, today we'll be looking at some Verilog code we were writing in lab. Uh, this Verilog program we're looking at here is a calculator program uh, we were writing during the quarter. Um, this calculator program runs on our Spartan 3, uh, Spartan 3 development boards. Um, and those boards have eight switches on them, which we were using for our numerical input as well as uh, what operator we wanted our calculator to perform. Uh, we have a clock uh, provided by the crystal on board. Uh, one of the buttons we were using for reset to clear the state of our calculator. Uh, the other three buttons we have, uh, one was to push the value from the switches onto the calculator stack. Uh, another button was a calculate button. And the third button was uh, a uh, hexadecimal to BCD conversion button uh, we had on there. Uh, some of the outputs on the Spartan 3 board, we have um, four seven-segment displays. So these four anodes go to the four seven-segment displays. Uh, we have a single seven-segment um, wire that goes to all those displays, which is here. Um, so basically, you have to drive the wire and then you cycle through uh, the anode, and it'll display that same uh, that same number on each of the seven segment displays. So you have to drive both in order to to make the uh, the seven segment display light up. Um, and then we also have four LEDs, which we use to um, kind of denote how many items are on the calculator stack. So one of the first things we needed to do was set up a, uh, a decoder in order to drive this seven segment display here. Um, so let's take a look at that module. Um, so this is our seven segment uh, display decoder. Uh, so it takes in a four bit number and it outputs an eight bit um, decoded number that'll display properly on the, uh, it's, it's formatted for the seven segment displays. Um, so basically what we have here is everywhere where there is a 1, the segment will be off, and everywhere where there's a 0, the segment will be on. Um, and so this is the number 0. So basically all of these zeros are the ring that make the number 0, and then this one corresponds to the middle bar that would be on if it was like an 8, and then this corresponds to the decimal. Um, so that's the number zero in uh, seven segment format. And so it goes through zero through nine and then 10 through 15 are A, B, C, D, E, and F, uh, all the hex values. Um, so this decoder takes in that four bit number, outputs the eight bit seven segment formatted number, um, and that's a decoder. And we do it with a case statement inside of an always block here. Um, every possible case has to be defined, uh, otherwise uh, Xilinx will, will throw a warning. Uh, so make sure that you define every possible case uh, in your case statement. Um, and that is our decoder for our seven segment display. So now that we have a decoder, we need um, some way to drive each of these anodes. Now we can't drive them all at once. We need to selectively uh, rotate through each of the uh, each of these seven segment displays, each of these anodes. And the way we need to do that, um, we need to do it fast enough to where uh, you can't tell that um, that it's being turned off and on, and you but you can't be on it so long that you get ghosting. Um, you need to be able to cycle through all four of the anodes quick enough so that the human eye cannot tell that they're actually turning on and off. Um, but if you don't, if you're not on them long enough, then they'll appear dim, or they'll, like I said, have ghosting. Um, so you need some way to, depending on what time it is, um, drive each of the separate anodes, uh, which will light up each of the separate seven-segment displays. So let's go ahead and take it our take a look at our multiplexer that that and that does that. Uh, it consists of two things. One, we have a counter here at the top, and this is a real basic counter. Um, it's a counter of size 20, so we create um, a register of size 20, and basically we increment on every positive edge of the clock. And so we have this 20-bit uh, this number that needs to be filled up, and it'll be filled up 
one clock pulse at a time. Um, so we take that counter and we take the two most significant bits of that counter and we look at those two bits. Now those two bits are going to be the selection bits of our multiplexer. This is a 4 to 1 multiplexer down here. Um, again using a case statement and we're looking at the two most significant bits of our counter. So those two most significant bits are our two selection bits. Um, the number of inputs to your multiplexer, remember, is determined by the number of uh, selection bits you have. It's 2 to the 2 raised to the power of the number of selection bits. So in this case, we have two selection bits. 2 to the 2 is 4, hence we have four inputs to our multiplexer. Um, so again, this is, our, is each of our cases. And um, as this counter increments, and the last two, the two most significant bits, as that counter increments, each one of these case statements will eventually be true. And when each of these case statements is true, um, two things happen. One, we select what anode we want to drive, which seven segment we want to just drive, and we also select what we want to display um, on that seven segment display. Uh, so similar to the decoder I showed you earlier, um, zero determines what is on. So we have four separate seven segment displays. This is the rightmost, then one in the middle, then one of the other middle. Um, and in, in our calculator, we only used three of the displays. So in this last case, all ones means they're all off. Um, so this line here, the AN line in each of these cases, this cycles through what anode we want to drive. Basically, this is what seven segment display we want to light up. This is the rightmost, middle, left. Rightmost, middle, left. And then the number is actually what we're going to be displaying on that seven segment display we're driving. Um, so this is in reality is two uh, four to one muxes, two four to one multiplexers. Um, and if we look at the top level here, this is where we actually in, instantiate that module. Um, and so the outputs, this is the output of one of our uh, MUXs. This is the output of the other MUX. The input to the MUXs, this is the input to one of the MUXs. And the input to the other MUX is really easy. It's just which of the three anodes do we want to drive. So that's a 4 to 1 multiplexer here, which is just looking at the two most significant bits of a counter, and that counter is incrementing on every positive edge of the clock. So it'll take, it'll have to fill up all of the other 18 bits before it fills up 19 and 20, which this multiplexer looks at. So it has a, a, a lot of, uh, it spends a lot of time on each one of these cases. And because it spends so much time on each one of these cases, that will mean that this anode will be lit up with this number, and so it will actually make each of them bright enough. So it spends a lot of time on each one in order to drive the anode long enough, in order to make the light bright enough to see, to where it doesn't look like it's flickering at all. Um, so that's a multiplexer and a decoder, um, and those are both used in our calculator here. Um, so that's kind of two neat things we did in lab. One of the last things I want to... Um, show you, since I've shown you a 4 to 1 multiplexer, um, is show you some examples of uh, ways you can write 2 to 1 multiplexers. Um, so these lines here are all um, assignment statements, and this is the uh, ternary operator. Um, this is used a lot in C um, and here in Verilog. Um, and basically it's a, uh, it's in a way to do assignments kind of using the uh, if-then or if-else um, if else syntax. So basically what it says is this variable BCD check is going to get the value of um, one bit of binary zero or the value of button zero based on if this is true or not. And that's what each one of these uh, each one of these assigned statements has a ternary operator and kind of follows that same, if this is true, then assign this, else assign this to here. And so that 
in essence gives you a two to one multiplexer um, using the ternary operator and the assignment statement. Um, so that's one of the neat tricks we picked up in lab. I uh, thought I'd share it with you since we've looked at a, this is a four to one multiplexer and there's actually two four to one multiplexers here um, as well as a uh, decoder which we saw here in the seven segment display. So just some neat things we looked at in uh, lab and uh, that I showed you here in some Verilog code. So I uh, hope that helps.